Okay, so this question wants you to uh, draw a box plot. So we should have a visual picture in our mind of what a box plot uh, may look like. So we should remember that we need a minimum value, a lower quartile value, a median value, an upper quartile value, and a maximum value. Those five points get plotted, and then we draw the box around them. So we've got a set of data here that we need to calculate those values for. Well, the minimum is obvious, the maximum is obvious because they're already in size order for us. Um, the median, well, there's 15 women, so if we add one to that, 16 and a half, 8. So the eighth woman will be the middle one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's going to be the median uh, age of uh, the women. And we've got seven data points below the middle. And if we add one to that, 8 and a half, it's 4. So the fourth data point will be the quarter way. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So that will be the lower quartile value, and then the fourth data point in the upper half, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and that will be the upper quartile value. Um, remember what the lower quartile value means. It means you're a quarter of the way along the distribution, and 25% of your data is below 20. 75% of your data is above 20. So basically it's about the idea of showing you what percentage of your data is below or above a particular position within the distribution. So the minimum value is 16. So again, we always look at the scale of the graph, and we can see here that um, for every little square, it's worth 1. So 16, um, that's 15, 16. So we plot that point. And then uh, the lower quartile was 20. So we plot that point. And the median was 28. So we plot that point. Uh, the upper quartile was 42 and the maximum value was 50. And because this is a box plot, then of course we recognize that the two sides have the whiskers, and the box is drawn around the quarters to show the distribution of the middle 50% of the data. In other words, the width of the box is the same as the interquartile range. And then the median, we draw the position of the median. So we plotted our box plot and we normally put uh, some stops on the end. So that's our box plot drawn, so three marks uh, again for that bit. The question has shown two box plots, uh, one you've drawn yourself and one they've already drawn for you, uh, which was for the distribution of the men at the same club. Um, classic question then would be to compare these distributions. Now what you've got to realise when you're doing comparisons with box plots is Again, like all core processes of data, we need to compare an average and we need to compare a range. And there's several things we can do here. So the average we'll compare is the median, because uh, that's what you're using to plot as part of the box plot, to show the middle position in the distribution. And the range, well, you've got two types of range. You've got the ordinary range and we've got the interquartile range. Um, you should really use the interquartile range um, because it's going to ignore any extreme values. It's, it basically includes the uh, centre of your data, the middle 50% spread. Um, because it's about box plots, it's a high level question, so the interquartile range would be expected to be quoted. But if you talked about the ordinary range as well, then there's no harm. Um, mentioning both, you could be yourself. So, the median averages, um, let's get a little table of data. So we've got men. We've got uh, women, and we're going to calculate the median, and we're going to calculate the range, and we're going to calculate the interquartile range. So again, show the evidence of what you're doing to do your comparisons, get your calculations done, and then write the sentences that compare them. So for the men, uh, the median average was 36. And for the women, we calculated it as 28. Uh, the range for the men, well, the maximum value was 46, uh, down to 20, so that's 26. And for the women, uh, it went from 50 down to 16, so that's going to be 34. The interquartile range, well, for the women, we can see that the width of the box, which is the upper quartile value, take away the lower quartile value, was 22. So for the women, the interquartile range was 22. And for the men, the width of the box was going from 40 to 26. So that was 14. 
So, something else to also consider when we're talking about box plots is skew. In other words, has the distribution been um, skewed in some way or biased in some way? Well, we can see with this um, for the women's box plot that the median value is to the left of the box. So this is showing that it's being positively skewed, which is suggesting that the spread of the lower 50% of the data is less than the spread of the upper 50%. So the upper 50% is more spread out. So this is what we call positive skew. So this one is positive skew. And when we look at the men's um, box plot, we can see that it's gone the other way around. The spread and distribution of the lower 50% of the data is wider, and the upper 50% of the data, the spread is less. So this is called negative skew. So it's been negatively skewed. So we've done all our calculations, so that will give us our calculation marks for the distribution. Um, but obviously we then have to talk about uh, what the values mean. Uh, it's uh, better compare. So we'd have to say things like, um, on average, the men are older, because their median average was 36. So 36 is greater than 28. Always quote the values, it's quite useful. Um, we would say that the range suggests, but it's actually the interquartile range and the range, so the interquartile range and the range suggests that the women's ages are more spread out as the values uh, higher. So we can see from the table that the interquartile range for the women is 22, which is bigger than 14, and the range itself is 34, which is bigger than 26. So both ranges um, are suggesting that the spread of the women's ages are wider, the distribution is wider. And then we could also mention the skew. Uh, the men's ages are positively skewed. whereas the women's ages are negatively skewed. So again, you know, we're using all the data, we're talking about it in detail, and uh, it's better to write more than less uh, when you're doing comparisons, so compare every bit of data you can, and that's why I've calculated both the range and the interquartile range, um, cover myself, make sure I'm uh, talking about as much as I can, and I've also included skew to talk about skew. Now if the exam question was only worth two marks, and you get that uh, seen by brackets and only marks, then you might concentrate on just talking about two things, and then come back at the end of the exam if you've got time, and add more into it. Um, but that's how you can do comparisons with box plots.